I'm Ann Jacobs. I'm the director of the Prisoner Reentry Institute, and I have to say we're in the process of renaming ourselves because in significant measure through Carol's leadership when she was at DOJ, we have been increasingly recognizing the problem with nominalizing people as prisoners or worse, offenders or ex-cons or even the homeless rather than infusing the dignity that people deserve by calling them people who might be involved in the criminal justice system. So we're trying to figure out what that means for our future um, identity. In case you haven't, haven't been able to figure out the theme, we were encouraged to reflect on what brought us to this work. Kind of takes me uh, a long way back. Um, in 1968, I was a student um, at GW University. And I went to school in the midst of the Vietnam War, the Civil Rights Movement, the women's movement. I'm seeing a few nods in the room. <laughs> I had very little idea what I wanted to do, but I knew I wanted to contribute to making a better world. Luckily, I kind of along the way found my life's calling by accident. I had a sociology professor who recognized my restlessness um, and who encouraged me to do an internship at Project Crossroads which was a Department of Labor funded um, initiative, recognizing that people who got a criminal conviction were less likely to get employed. The Department of Labor was providing leadership around pretrial diversion, and part of the model was to hire people who had been through the criminal justice system to staff those programs. Now, people I work with now think this is a new idea and they call it credible messengers, but I'm telling you it goes a ways back. So there I was, like a 19-year-old um, white kid from the suburbs who was placed in the middle of this office building on 6th um, Street Northwest, which is very close to the courts, in a big open room filled with black men, all of whom had done time and who were counseling youth on how to take a different path than the one that they had taken. And I was there on a regular basis, sitting in the back of the room doing what we called data collection, but to the horror of my colleagues meant we were just going through paper files doing hash marks, you know, to capture the demographics of the population. It was data gathering. But the real power of it for me was that I got a chance to be an observer into um, a world that would not, otherwise not have been accessible to me. And one thing led to another, and you know, 50 years later, I've had a career in criminal justice reform because it was quite clear from that moment on that criminal justice and incarceration was the civil rights issue that was accessible for me to work on. So this placement changed the trajectory of my life, and when I came to John Jay, and was hired and encouraged by then President Travis to think about the ways in which, as a research center, we could be of service to the students and the faculty. It occurred to some of us that the opportunity was to create fellowships or internships, the opportunity for long-term placements of students in community-based organizations that were doing important work. And with the support of the Pinkerton Foundation, the Tao Foundation, David Rockefeller Fund, we have a robust portfolio of fellowship programs that place stu our students, both undergraduate and graduate, in placements that are between two semesters and 15 months long, stipended because money is an issue for our students, um, with good supervision from their work sites, with academic work from the college, a lot of professional development and opportunities that our students wouldn't have otherwise. And the results have been nothing short of spectacular for the host sites, for our students, you know, for the community at large. Because um, the Prisoner Reentry Institute is concerned with what it takes for people to live successfully in the community after justice involvement, and we're part of CUNY, a significant portion of our work has been on increasing access to higher ed for people who've been involved in the criminal justice system. And we get to do this through our college program at Otisville, which is a state prison. Um, we do it through credit-bearing classes at the city jail. 
all intended to develop a pathway of people to CUNY or other institutions um, of higher learning when they get out. And through our college initiative program, we're now working with about 500 people at any one time who are in the process of enrolling in and going to school. At this point, we've got about 325 people across 22 different CUNY campuses and a handful of SUNYs and, and uh, other um, schools. So we're really proud of our work um, and our accomplishments and the, di the direct contact we get to have with students but we use it to inform our policy work. Um, we think that the two go hand in hand, that the more direct contact you have with people, the more insight you have into the policies that you're advocating for changing. So I want, it all came together today in an event that many of the people in the room were able to, to participate in when we had a um, round table on the future of college in New York State Prison that was attended by the CUNY Chancellor, the SUNY Provost, chairs of the Corrections Committee for the Assembly in the Senate, several levels of, of the Department of Corrections and Community Supervision, um, foundation officials, all sorts of funders. I mean, it was an amazing conversation masterfully facilitated by Jeremy, who's maintained his commitment to this work. Um, and around the table are a couple of people, one of whom you'll hear from later, and I, so I won't describe Ronald's um, incredible accomplishments. But one of the people is currently a foundation official. He's the senior criminal justice director for a foundation that's based in New York, I mean, in, in Washington. But I met him when he was a John Jay undergraduate slash master's student who was one of our community students who would go monthly to Otisville to uh, participate in the learning exchange. And it was really kind of remarkable that Docs had let him do that because he'd also been previously incarcerated, which is where he started his, um, his studies. He, after being part of our learning exchange, became part of the Pinkerton Fellowship and did an amazing placement at a community-based organization called CASES, went to work at Vera um, on their post-secondary um, college um, initiative, um, a couple of foundations, and now he is a foundation official. And so to me, that was just the best example of how this work comes together in ways that make a tangible difference in certainly his life and then all of the lives that he's touched.